We are here. <laughs> we are, finally. If you're, if you're trying to watch the first one, I had to delete it because it wasn't going to both places. I don't know. We've just had some issues with StreamYard these last couple of days. Um, hopefully, this is figured out and you'll come back and join us. <laughs> you know, it's just the tightest tech issues. Oh, thank you. Good. Kathy's here. We have somebody here. That's always helpful because then we know at least uh, it's starting to work. See, we're, we're dressed in black, so just- Oh my it's, goodness, I didn't even know that. It's that, per, that perfect. Funny. <laughs> it's I know. perfect for this. Know. It has just been, if you're on my Facebook page, you probably saw it, a whole bunch of notices in a row, and it's because it just didn't work <laughs> to keep doing it, so then I would delete it and do another one, Look and then there's this whole row. Oh, good. Thanks, you guys. So, you know, it's the tightest tech- Troubles. It needs another T. You know, troubles. Uh, tightest tech troubles. So we thank you for putting up with us. We're not fun today because we're actually, I'm better at tips for um, card making than I am for tech. So let me tell you, you're never going to see a Titus top 10 tick, tech, tech, tech video for sure. We'd be in big trouble. But um, we're going we're gonna to practice a little breathing <laughs> and slowing down. And in case you didn't know this, when you come back and watch the replay on YouTube, uh, you can click on the see more and all the chapters, all the different topics, the 10 topics we covered today, they're all listed. You can just go to those and just see that part. So you don't have to watch the whole thing again. You can to make can fun of us and part. think, uh, how did they do this? You know, but, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, just for that. So hello, hello. So glad to have you guys with us. So, think, so of course, we're going to start with cards. But I think the perfect, the perfect oh. background for this black is uh, <laughs> Well, this is the setting for this cards. Is. This is. Because this is the uh, host code this month, and you can always find it at KarenTitus.com, too. It's because just Karen right there. needs three of you, you to cut six-inch papers. Papers. Because paper shares are coming up. They're going to be up next week. We've run into a little glitch trying to get everything done. Um, but just be aware. So we have paper shares, and you can get six-by-sixes. And the really product shares, you can add ribbons, embellishments, all three, or you can get the four by sixes with coordinating cardstock. And next week, I'm just going to do a video with some tips on how to use them, why it's fun to get it that way. So that's just really wonder. Uh, Kathy says she may go back and watch each single tip because she wouldn't want to miss the community here and all the comments. I said, oh, we love you guys. That's just awesome. Okay. Oh, Rebecca, I love that. Titus tumultuous technical times. Yes. <laughs> if we did a newsletter like that, do any of you want to subscribe? <laughs> no, I think we've kind of found our niche here. It is tumultuous. With you guys. We just <laughs> appreciate you. And I really get discombobulated when tech issues happen more than anything. You know, we can kind of go with the flow with paper or anything else. But oh, that tech, it's just Jenny didn't get the memo to wear black today. <laughs> I no. think this is the first. That is so funny. Because you do know we put a lot of thought into our mm -hmm. uh, wardrobe. So, Rhonda says community is just the best. Thank you, guys. That is our keyword. So, we just say, oh, and by the way, oh, someone else does have black on. <laughs> Renee does. That's great. Um, I actually put this question up in the back porch stamper. So, if you're not over in that group, come join us. I wanted to both ask what questions you have about basic tips and also what tips you have to give me for future things. Because today we're covering just really the basics. We could go in depth on each of these and so much more. So there's going to be a lot more to come. But for today, it begins. But first, let's look at cards. But do you, do you think that you have a, a tie-dye t-shirt underneath? Oh, this? yeah. I'm not so colorful See? underneath. <laughs> See, that's... Thank you, Betsy, if she's on the call. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what stamp And there's a new tie-dye stamp, you know, so Tim's just going to have yes. to do this. Okay. Let us... Um, I hope we've got okay. all, all that there is. You know what? This is Bobby Miller from Arizona. Oh, monochromatic. I love monochromatic cards. That is just really lovely. Just with a large stamp and the paper. Isn't that fun? And the little butterflies there. Very cool. And the strip on the inside. I love it. And a note. Love it, love it. That is wonderful. And then this is from Amanda Bach from Illinois, a moose card to show off the retiring buffalo. Oh, that is so fun. Oh, Tim. Happy birthday. Oh, that is an, I'll oh, look at, and look how she did the inside. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh, we absolutely love that. It's a very Thank masculine you. card. Thank you. That is wonderful. And this one, 
Tim put out to share. It's a, it's not even a handmade card, but look at that. It's a cool postcard. And it is from Florida Keys. Jackie Lawrence. And the thing that's cool about it is she sent this, just let us know that she took the card kit idea that we had been sharing to make 30 Easter card um, uh, for church, for elderly people at church in the shower and all that. And 30 baby shower thank yous for not, oh. So that's really cool just to thank you, saying she's using the things. We love it. And, oh, Tim, you got to show this card. This is from this, Maine, and it's Terry. With the last name. Terry R. And I could go out on a limb and get, is it like Rodriguez or something like that? I, I, I'm not sure, but Terry, this if you're in here, you have to just tell us. It was us. amazing. Oh, Tim, loved, boy, does this fit his kitchen or what? When, you know? when, when we went on our tour of our house, we stopped in my kitchen, and I showed off my, my <laughs> chickens. Because I got chickens in the windows, I got chickens on the wall. No, I have one more and this thing. looks very art deco to me. And oh, some of the yes. stuff in the kitchen is because it's from our, our oh, parents' yes. homes. And so I think that's all right. It's not a stamp nothing, but I love it. And it, it just kind of has that look and feel to it, which is really awesome. It is wonderful. Oh, so thank you, Terry. We love it. Beautiful. We love it. Okay, so what we are doing today, and Tim, this is what you're going to be in charge of. Yeah. Going to be our 10 top tips. So this is how it's, oh, it's, how it's going to be easy to find. Tim, you better be in charge of this because I already no. did it upside down. So we probably don't need the white. Yeah, we do because I'm going to be working on Oh, well, but do you want to go back and forth with it? doesn't really yeah, matter. I know. It's, looks, it's whatever you want to do with it. so nice. Okay. Okay. So we're really efficient. Oh, and by the way, yeah, here are some of the new ribbons. So I'll just set those aside. Okay. Let us. Oh, okay. I have one more announcement before we. Um, the All Good Cards Club. We are doing diamond folds. And and bay windows, so just some fun cards that starts tomorrow night. Now it's only fifteen dollars, and you there's still room to join us. When we yeah, when we splice and we dice. Yeah, this is where we're that's gonna, your job. You do all well, the editing. Yeah. This is where we're going to start right here. <laughs> right here, clean start. <laughs> Number one is. But I had to read this first. Dora says Tim, you should make a magnet out of that rooster. That would be oh. perfect for his magnet collection. I agree. So. Yeah. Number one, how to cut and fold cardstock. We are going very basic here, but you know what I find? I've been stamping since 1996. I still, I can forget things, and I can also hear a new tidbit that I hadn't heard before. So I would love to hear from any of you, whatever is new to you here, uh, anything you want to add to it. These are all things before. So a couple of basics. When you cut your cardstock, you can cut either the long way or across this way. When I do big, big card events and I have the model card up, people come up to me and say, oh, I have the wrong card size in here because they might have gotten this one instead of this one. Does that make sense? So they're thinking it's wrong. This card's going to stand like this or this. This one's going to stand like this or this. But... They are exactly the same. And that's where I love to say, no, you didn't get it wrong. It's just kind of whatever things were scored at at my house, but they all make the same size card. So uh, I just want to point that out first, how you can cut your paper either way. And then what I absolutely love using is the simple score. So I just wanted to point out that you can also, and this saves a step, you can score if i'm gonna do the long way you can score first i could score a whole bunch of these and then put them through the cutter and they're already scored does that make sense and i could do that with this one okay and then i could cut a whole bunch that way so i just wanted to point that out also you'll notice on my simply scored i have some permanent lines here i i did this actually originally because i was working with a young woman with downs that uh, we, she was making card kits to sell, and I thought this was easier to use for marking. And you know what? I use it all the time. I said, it's really for me. <laughs> I said, I just love it as a guide. So if I'm ever putting on my paper this way, or let's just say you've got your, well, say you've got your cards cut, because you might see that. Do you see this is going to mark the middle of that size? This one's going to mark the middle of that size. And then I just don't even have to think about it. I have to look at it. I just know exactly what lines to score on. So it's really a time saver. And the other thing that's cool, you'll see I have another one over here. Because you know, whenever you do, I really prefer this for scoring as much as possible over, I know you can use the 
cutter score and do all that. But I really like using this. So if I've got tick marks, let's say, I'm just going to do this for show. Let's pretend I'm going to make my things. This weekend, we're going to be using this idea since we're going to be doing diamond folds. But I could put this in my paper cutter. But you see, I all can also just put that on the line and that on the line. And then I can score right like that. This is just the way I like to do it. So these lines are here for me. <laughs> They're just great reference points. So They're for Anna and for older people. Yeah, and I think for anyone, you know, anytime we can take the thinking of location and any of the math. <laughs> okay, oh, Jenny is asking, oh, here's a good question. Which way do you fold when you get this done? Because Jenny's saying that her paper sometimes cracks when she's folding. And I tend to think that certain... There are two surfaces, right? That certain, um, certain lots of paper just seem to crack more. So I'm just going to tell you, because I don't have an exact answer. I have been told for years that when I, you score your paper, I basically stretched or even broken these fibers. And so that's already done, so you want to fold it this way. Now, this is perfect. Sometimes I find when I do this, I get more frayed edges. And so sometimes I think it's better to fold the other way. So how's that? That's a Karen kind of answer. Uh, play with it and see what you think. But you can't feel any difference from one side to the other. No, I think they're going to look the same. You know, the more you fold it, the more you're yeah. going to get this crease. But as long as you have that, and if you're working with cardstock, like sometimes I find that with thick whisper white more, I should have brought some of that out. I can, you know, as you have further questions, I'll do more exploring and see that too. I would find that one way would work better for me to fold than the other. And then what I do, if I do have those frayed edges, I dip my finger in a little bit of water and I smooth it out and it seems to just put all those back together and then you don't see it. That's what I do to just kind of hide that. So hopefully that helps. Great tips. <laughs> so yes, keep those coming. And you know, I miss some of the comments that are on here. Now I'm, um, but know that I go back and I look for them. So it'd be a great place to ask questions. You can also ask your questions over in the back porch stampers. Okay, we'll get rid of those for now. Okay, we'll and move on to the next one. Yes. Oh, Tim, you're on top of it. More than I am. See, it takes it takes two of us <laughs> to try to manage this. Yes. Okay, how to cut layers for cards? All right. This is one I get asked for okay. a lot. Wait. Mm -hmm. Number two is how to cut layers for cards, and the first tint is not crooked like this. <laughs> I noticed that, and I was doing it, yeah. and you know, I was really raced for time, like like usual. <laughs> But that's okay. It just sort of fits. The worst. Here's how not to. <laughs> You're going to want to be a little more exacting. <laughs> oh, yes. Mary Gunn, thank you for saying that. I forgot to say that. There is a grain to the paper. Let me show you this, too. Let me get, get a couple more. Um, oh, and I meant to say that. See? See why it takes a community? Because we forget things. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take two. I'm backing up. Let me show you if I fold my... Here, let me... No, I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to, well, I am going to cut it first. Let's see if I, I'm going to cut it first only because I think it'll show it better. But this is really important. Oh, look, you can tell the kids have been in your playing. Oh, look at you. Oh, my God. All these little, <laughs> Grandchildren. little uh, doodads from little play stuff they were working on. <laughs> we'll see if I can still cut this. Bubble. Oh, that is They're, so funny. Um, it was kind of like foam. It was like a little Easter basket trinkets. Uh, now you will know why I don't I don't use my 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 trimmer a lot. Okay. Okay. It's upside uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's why. She thought I, she lost her. I thought I did just okay, look at that is so interesting. Oh, isn't that fun? I'm gonna cut one this way. And then I'm gonna cut one this way. So we're doing them in halves. Oh my goodness. Uh, you can see why I like using my scoreboard. And of course, I have a guillotine cutter. So that's why I'm not very experienced in this. But I want to show you the difference. Paper does have a grain to it. When I cut my paper this way, do you see how much easier it is to fold? I can actually take, so this is a hint. If you don't have a scoreboard and you don't want to mess your time, I really can fold my paper this way and just take my bone folder and still get a really nice crease. But now watch, this way is going to be against the grain and it just doesn't fold as nicely. You can feel it's just much more um, 
it doesn't want to go this way. And I'm not going, do you see that, Tim? That's obvious. It it's is obvious. So obvious. You're not going to get this nice top. Yeah. So that's the difference with the grain. And this, if when you're folding this way, you really do uh, need to score it. This way, you really can get by without. So anyway, another, thank you, Mary Gunn, for that. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> Rebecca says, shut the front door. I didn't know about the water trick for split paper. Yeah, you know, we're kind of like make do people, right? Okay, now <laughs> we're back to cutting layers. Look at this nifty thing. You know, you guys, I talk about quarter inches all the time. I like to think in terms of quarter inches down whenever I'm going to make layered cards. And you can do one eighth inch, but to keep it simple, um, you know, like sometimes I'll do a quarter inch down, sometimes a half an inch down. So this is really a handy way to just have all these pieces together. Now what's interesting about this, and you could just keep these in a little bag or I just am on a little folder. But sometimes even if I'm just looking at the main thing I wanna put on a stamp, this just kind of helps to think of the size. And I don't know about you, but it's like, okay, I stamped an image and it's like this, well, it, it fits on something this wide. I can cut it this wide. And then I think I want it to be uniform on my card, but I have no idea the length. So this is kind of a cheat sheet. I actually have one on my blog that you'll see when you go there that actually does the eighth inches too. So if you care about that, but this is a nice reference point for just seeing how you want to layer your card. So I'm gonna show you how this is useful. So now, Oh, well, that's interesting. Carol said somebody told her to score paper on one side and then the other and then fold. You know what's interesting about this whole conversation, you guys, is a lot of times there's not like a perfect answer. This is really about uh, figuring things out and figure out what works for you, but isn't that fun? Uh, we're, we're good. We can just bring that up when we need it. So I did some cards here that are all the same. It's even the same paper, different variations, but do you see how these all have different with oh <laughs> bad scoring day okay so that was wrong so you're gonna have to visualize that one a little okay but i just think that's fun because sometimes when you make a card you want to have different looks to them and so like this one goes down a half inch this wider edge is a half inch instead of a quarter this is using a quarter inch this is a half here i'm jumping sometimes you just want to show more of any of the pieces as a frame so i think that is a fun a fun idea Rebecca says, no one eighth cut. She takes so much thinking. Yeah. Yes. You know, the only time I use one eighth, because I use these all the time, if I want to put a little bitty frame on something and I just start with whatever this is, and then I just scooch it over and do the one eighth. But I don't tend to sit and think about that's why I like having like the quarter inch things. But I think that's fun. It just kind of shows the different ways of I like what you get different looks. What do you think? As soon as we forget about this one. I know. And, and I like, really like it looks this. like a picture frame. It yes. Is, you know. Because I think we kind of easily gravitate towards yeah. these two, but I think it can often be really striking yeah. to have a wider thing around your your frame. So, I like that. so um, anyway, that is that is that tip. And of course, my blog post will go up this evening. It just takes me a little time to fix any errors or anything like that. Number three. Oh, number three. How to assemble stamps. See, we are going very basic here. And you, part of the reason I'm doing this video is so I'll, often I will get asked something and it might be something I've shown a bunch of times and I realize, you know what, Tim, not everyone watches all of our videos. No. So well, they haven't heard me say that before. So I'm not just grouping these together. And when Karen is asked, where is it? She'll say, well, let me look for it. Okay, so these are the red rubber stamps. So what I'm going to do with these, let's see, I'm just going to pick one here. Let's take this, I'll take this biggest one here. I'm, and of course, there are lots of different ways of doing this too. I'm just showing you how I do things. Putting this on, and I'm gonna take this. The new cling stamps cling really well. I know some people were asking about some of their older stamps, and you can use chapstick. I mean, there are other things we can do for make do, but I'm really kind of focused on this because all of the newer ones are this way. So this is written backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm just going to take this, and this is where I'm going to be right over it because I'm just going to hover over it best I can. You'll see my gray hair, and I'm just going to put it down and take it off. And there is my beautiful 
my fun little little stamp right there. So I have a couple of those done. That is a good technique. Now the next one will have a few tips to it because this one is number four. How to get better images with stamps. Now this is where we might want. Well, maybe not. Maybe we're okay. So we have a few different things here. Oh, I think I need the big scratch. I think I need the scratch paper on this one. Yes. All right. Okay. Number one. I gotta just see if I can find some paper in here somewhere, some scraps. Okay. Number one, I was just asking Tim before, now what was that song again? Because you guys know I use this all this time. There's that song, Tap Three Times on My Ceiling If You Want Me or something like that by Tony Orlando and Dawn. Yep. That's kind of my theme for stamping, but I change it to tap, tap three times on my ink pad. <laughs> before stamping. It's kind of the same. But if you watch this, I'll do one, two, three, stamp, and I get a nice, perfect image. Beautiful. And what this does, by reminding yourself this, it reminds you, we're not like trying to push in here. This is what's really easy to do. Kind of just push it in, make sure I want it really well inked. No, it's all and now when I stamp it, oh, this one's not going to give me edges, but this is when you're going to get edges. We're going to find one that does, that photopolymer. Oh, here, here's this one will give me edges. Okay. So if I do this one and just really ink it in there good, and now I stamp with that. I right, still, I can't get edges when I want, but I know you guys know what I'm thinking hey, what about. Are you doing? I'll get edges. It is so easy to rock a stamp. That is just <laughs> hilarious. I can't rock a stamp for the life of you. Or Tim, you can rock a stamp. See if you can rock that stamp. <laughs> I didn't pick the right stamp for this at all. Let me see if I have another one handy. Oh, Tim did it. Yay. All right. All right. It's an amateur to do that. Knock three times on the window if you love me is now my head copy. Is that not so great? <laughs> oh, good. You guys are liking these tips. That is wonderful. Karen says she's having fun watching while she's getting her car serviced. We're so glad to provide you a little <laughs> comic relief while you're doing that. Okay, so Tim showed that perfectly. Now you know what I need is a wet towel to, okay. to clean. Oh, no, I don't. I've got my chamois here because that's going to be another tip. Don't bring me a towel. You guys, I'm terrible because I, I'm really low tech. Learning to use my chamois because you know that is what we have, and it is so perfect. I'm going to get this all off, but I'm going to show you now what I do if I have a stamp that keeps giving me problems, or especially in the past, I did a lot of say, say more about the chamois. Well, we're going to come to that. Oh, it's on another tip, okay. so you know. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of big group events where we have 60, 70 people and we're all sharing stamps and I don't want to, you know, if I find some that are just really prone to this, I actually trim my stamp. If you notice here, I'll look on here, I'll find the places where I'm getting a lot, like off this F. You're going to notice on my stamp, the printing, um, I mean, the edging is really kind of down to the side. You know, that? do you see that? Yep. You know, and that's just kind of the way the dies work. But I take, after it's assembled, I just take at an angle scissors and I'm kind of going at an angle. So I'm kind of leaving that part and I'm going to go hit all of the little problem areas. So, you know, they're your stamps. You can do whatever you want. And then I'm not going to have that problem. <laughs> and I won't either. How do you recover from a rocky stamp on paper? That's a really good question. You know, there's this thing called layerings. <laughs> I usually just layer right on over it. And, and if it's in somewhere that you could put a little sequin or a little something, it's right there. If I rock a word and I know at my events, that would happen all the time. People say, oh, I messed up this word. I would have, we just punch out another place or cut out, you know, use a white paper, cut it out, put it over it. You're never gonna know. It looks like part of the artistic design. So that's my favorite thing for words. The thing about cutting the stamp down, the time you have to be careful is if you have tiny stamps because they need enough to hold on there. So you could cut away too much. So with little stamps, I don't do this. I just really do that tapping lightly. You know, there just is that, that tapping lightly, knock three times is really the best way to do that. So, oh, kind of saying she misses those days at church. Oh, I know I do two weeks to do that every other month. And I said, yeah, this year has changed a lot of things. Uh, and now another thing, the photopolymer stamps in general can be harder to get a good image, especially the larger stamps. See, now I'm going to do it on camera and it's going to work just fine. But if you ever have 
problems with this. You just want to use something like this is the Stampin' Pierce mat. It's only five dollars. I, in a pinch, would even use even the uh, just put the catalog down or a thick piece piece of Set paper. Yeah, anything like that to give that little extra cushion because we don't have the rubber like you do on that. So to do this, I would just put my paper right on here. And then I will take my, Linda says, oh, oh, she likes, yeah, trimming the cling stamps. They're not her favorite because of those lines that she gets. Yeah, they're a little trickier. I um, But you know, we're all crafty. We can kind of figure out some good things. Now I have a feeling, now watch, this isn't gonna be an issue at all. Tim, you're gonna stamp this on that paper. I'm gonna see if, <laughs> so, if it look, makes any difference to you. Stamp so it on there. Karen wants to mess up, she can't. <laughs> No, no, I'm gonna have them do both. Just so because. what do you want me to do? Just stamp. Yep, just stamp it. Okay, pull that off. Pull that off. We're good. Now we're gonna see if we get any difference on on this one. Mm. Now you're gonna stamp it on this one, and you will know. I don't like. I don't use a pierce mat all the time when I'm using photopolymer. But if you're using something that you're finding, oh, this isn't stamping just right. That's what you want to remember, because certain stamps just kind of. They all have now, their own. It's going to be a marked difference. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see what marked. Tim does. <laughs> yes. Um, Maryland was saying, we used to have to cut out all the stamps. That's right. And now they they come done. So, yes, it changes over the years. We'll stamp on up. That's true. Jenny says, Tim the ball guy. <laughs> I am. If anyone can make a mistake, Tim. <laughs> oh. Maybe they no, I think you're just fine. And I have a feeling these are going to look the really? same and you really aren't going to matter. But, oh, but look, look it at does. him. Okay, yeah. we're going to notice a couple things. Yeah. Do you see how that didn't fully stamp yep. there and that? Yep. So there is there. a difference. Oh, look at that. Oh. oh, that didn't stamp quite. Okay, so one more tip, but I didn't tell him that, so it doesn't count. Do it yourself, don't you? No, when you put it down again, sometimes this just needs a little bit of time to soak in. Oh, okay. But just on a large stamp. Okay. And now we have a real fuzzy look. Is yes, that awesome? It is so awesome. anyway, those are <laughs> okay. So do you want me to go get a paper towel to do this, or we... no? We're, we're done with that. We're moving on. Okay. What, what would be our next tip? <laughs> oh, I guess I'm not done. Uh, we, we have a bunch on these. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, people have asked about lining up stamps. You know what? Stamparatus is by far the best way to line up stamps. But when you don't have that, I love using the grid paper. I use the grid paper for all kinds of things. Even putting my layers on, it can often help just to see where they are. But OK, so if I want my words to go across there. Now, of course, you know, a whole nother idea would be to put a little post-it note here. So, you know, if you want even more clarification, put that a little below where you want it. But otherwise, even just visually, if I'm stamping on this, it gives me, oh, first of all, I'm, I'm gonna say this too. I always stamp first on scratch paper because I wanna see how well lined up this is. And I also wanna test to see if my ink pad needs re-inking. You know, I'd rather do that. Sometimes, you know, I'll stamp on a card, I put effort into it and then it's like, oh, I should have re-inked that. And one more tip, I just think of more as we go along. With photopolymer, if they're longer and they, you know, they can curve when you put them on, you want them straight, if you want them curved, that's an awesome thing to do. If you want them straight, if you can just put it down first and then tap this on, and then that's awesome. And she's used all of her ink. Yeah, so now I'll get more ink. And now, and again, I would stand up to look at the standing up makes a world of difference. And that's not perfect, but you can see it gives me a better visual line it's than doing nothing. So it's just a helpful thing, especially if you're doing something in the middle. If I'm doing down on the edge, it's pretty easy to look at it. But if I want something somewhere else. So those are just some other. Let me see if I needed anything else with that. I think I think that will do. Let's go to the next I one. I think number four turned out to be a big one. Which black pad to use? Oh, I'm going to show, I'm just going to show you. This is my little cheat thing. So we have Memento and Stays On. And this is my little cheat thing. I just put on the back what you use them for. So Stays On is for anything that gets wet. It's for watercolor pencils. That's only if you're going to watercolor them. It doesn't matter if you're just going to color with them. But the Aqua Painters or the new other paint things that we have, the blender pens, they all get really moist. That's when you do stays on. Also, if you're gonna stamp on um, 
So I could add a few more things. Like if I were going to stamp on wood or some of those more unusual things, I would use stays on. Other than that, I like memento. This is the stamp and blends. This is what you want. And that's my favorite way to color. So I use that a lot for this. But also, you can see how well used this is. For my basic black stamping, if I'm just, you know, doing any other kind of stamping, it's memento. It is. I think I have about a dozen of these pads and I don't know how I picked the ones that were so well used. Again, I have all these supplies because I used to do all these big group events and now we don't. And I look at all these multiples that I have. It's, it is just pretty funny. Uh, so, um, oh, that's a good idea. Foamy art paper. Um, somebody saying two would make a good pad, uh, a make do pad. You know, we're kind of make do people. We can kind of think of a lot of things to do it. So, um, I'll have to look at some of these because I think there's some of the great tips in here, but it's a little too hard to use. But anyway, this is one thing that I I love to do just as a reminder. Anytime you can have notes around, as, <laughs> as I get older, I'm putting one more notes everywhere. Number six, how to re-ink pads. And again, there's probably all kinds of ways to do this, but this is what I do. I have no idea if this needs ranking or not. We're just showing how to do that. I'm just going to take my rinker bottle. And by the way, you're going to want to order a reinker whenever you order the ink pad, because you know when the day comes and you're realizing, "Ooh, I need a reinker," then it's there. I just put dots all over. Ooh. And I just use the nozzle. Now I could also use your finger, like a gift card or anything little pot. I, you know, I could use anything. I'm just mixing it in this way. So, and I'm guessing you'll know when you stamp if you have enough. And then I will just grab a stamp here and a paper. Then I will take a stamp. And what I do is just stamp it all around because that also just helps to get it totally, totally mixed up. And then I can tell, oh, it's nice Very and nice. ready ready to use. <laughs> nice check. But it's okay. It was this upside down. So that's kind of a basic re-inker. <laughs> Biddy says we're halfway through this. And her brain has reached capacity. <laughs> Thanks for video replays. Oh, I love it. Becca, you are so wonderful. You just brighten our day with all your fun comments. Uh, yes. And <laughs> yes, yeah, stays on also like on acetate if you're doing window sheets. Thank you, Kathy, for that. Yes. Anything unusual, then you're going to want to double check. But, you know, today we're kind of, this is like everyday stamping tips. If you guys like this, I want to do a whole bunch more of these. I'd love to do some different tool tips like the um, take your pick tool. Any of these things we're doing here, we could go in more depth too. We could do a whole thing just on ink pads. But this is kind of like um, a good basis, whether somebody's new or a refresher or just think to, um, I use stays on and vellum. Has anyone else used the other? That's just what I've used. Uh, so let me see, what's our next one? Number seven. How to clean stamps. And we did just show that. I, Here's how I clean stamps. I know. We're terrible at reaching for paper <laughs> towels. But, you know, it's also very wasteful. So this is really, um, I, I, I'm really, this is one of my resolutions to become really good at using this. So I just, this is the chamois. When a chamois is dry, it is just like this. Like a sponge. That, yes. It's like those um, Scandinavian. Yeah. Dish cloths. Yes, I use all that. Tim time. uses all the time that he just loves, and our kids keep getting them when they see something that kind of fits him, which is really fun. I wonder why they don't ever give me gifts like that. Because <laughs> I don't do dishes. <laughs> and you see how this one, when you put it in the water, mm -hmm. it is just like that, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? And it can get stained and ugly, and it doesn't matter. It still works. I can put underwater, rinse it out. It's still going to be stained and ugly. Like it's been washed and this is still on there, but it absolutely doesn't matter. And so, Tim, yes. since this is new to you, we're going to let you. Okay. You're the guinea pig today. I'm going to go clean it. What you're going to just stamp this, stamp it once, and then clean the pad. Yep. Right. Tap three times. Yes. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh. Oh, and the stamp three times is most important for smaller stamps, of course, on oh, on a bigger, yeah, and here's on a block. This is kind of a big block. You can even see if you have any extra mess up there. Okay, so you're just going to stamp on that. 
Yeah, it's got a little wet. So it's okay. These aren't actual projects, Tim, unless you want to turn them into okay. actual. She said when they're bigger like this, you just hold them down longer. Okay. So two hours later. Okay. No. Oh, and look at that, well, Tim. That's, that's isn't what? that awesome? It doesn't matter. But look at that just shows. Yes. Okay. See? So where is that little thing? It was meant have? to be on cue. It's okay. okay. We've already shown that. Now you, no, you can oh. clean it here. <laughs> we should practice ahead someday. Do you think that would make a difference? <laughs> And he was being helpful at getting all of his stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's very and cool. it's just going to last. So this is our new thing. So I'm not going to ask you for wet paper towels anymore. If I do, what's your response going to be? No, use, use your... Use the chamois. Okay. That's our new... <laughs> so that's our, our new thing. Uh, yes, Amy, that's a good point. She said you can also cut the chamois in half. If you have smaller hands, or if you want them for the kids, or if you want two separate things, or if you have arthritis. So, you know, this is our stuff. We can kind of do do whatever. I had trouble closing. Oh, we should mention closing pads because we yes. didn't do that. Opening and closing that's pads. Seven, that's 7.5. Okay. I'm just throwing this in. You can open the pads just like, uh, what do you call that? Like a cassette tape or something? I don't know. Like you just, and then you slide it in. If. You can also, whoa, look at my fingers. I'm going to, okay, you can also do, okay. You can also, <laughs> okay, what is the, uh, you can, uh, there, okay. I knew I was going to get it. See, see, I even have to remember things. But look at this. I can push at the end and pop it out. So that way works too. Oh, wasn't that an efficient tip? <laughs> Ooh, A for efficiency there. <laughs> Okay. Cleaning stamps after using stays on. You know, I still, there is a stays on cleaner. And I'm just going to be perfectly honest. I only clean my stamps with stays on cleaner when I'm ready to be rid of them and donate them. I just leave them. I figure if my stamps are clean and I could still put them in yellow and they're not going to leave any residue as long as they're clean. I don't care if they're discol discolored. You know, some of the poly photopolymer stamps too will discolor. So no matter how well you clean them, there's they're still going to be a tint of color. That doesn't bother me. I just want to know that they're clean. And you don't want to use the stays on cleaner on your polymer stamps. So if they just get a little stained, it's fine. Uh, they're just for your rubber stamps. But I just figure if they're clean, I don't care if they are black. <laughs> okay. Yes. Nope. You want to move on? Uh, yes. The answer are we the ready? Next one mm -hmm. is glue dots. Yes. What adhesive to use? Now, this can be a whole other series. So I'm only going to cover one adhesive today. Oh, we are just, I'm not doing glue dots, which is probably my favorite uh, because I assemble cards with glue dots at night when Tim watches TV because I love to just, I can just, so that's just an aside. But there are so many adhesives. I just wanted to start today with the multi purpose glue for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're a new stamper or you're making kits to do with kids or whatever, or to, Take it is the cheapest and it just lasts forever. You want to store them upside down like this. This is the kind of little container you can get off of Amazon. This Janet Frederick, who might be on here, made for me. It's a shot glass and it has this hot glue. And you see the cover is hot glued down in there. And then this just screws on there. Um, that made a great gift. You could find something that fits somebody like. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of a fun. Yeah, and she's from Idaho. So she did these with Idaho, but I thought they're, they're really cool. And what I like about these. Okay. I'm just going to show. I, th I think my biggest tip for using this with cards, and I'm terrible at this. I will say that. Um, okay, which one? I'm just going to do this. It's easy to get too much glue on. And the trick is to just put a little bit around the outside edges, and then you won't have any problem. And that's why glue just lasts Ooh. forever. So that's just a little visual for there. So you, I'm going to close that up and pretend I wanted it that way. Is that okay, or did I really hurt your feelings okay. by messing up your card? No. Okay. It's okay. It was not perfect. And then where is the... What do you need? Um, this is what I need. The main thing I wanted to show this is just this is just the best tip. Every time we do this, there will be some people that haven't seen it. It is the best way for putting on things that you want to hide. Okay, we're going to put vellum 
and we're going to put a fancy die on. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to use a silicone mat, another great thing. Even with the other, other um, adhesives, you know, on the roller, using them on a silicone mat is so great. If you get any excess, it just comes right off. My glue is going to just dry and then I'm going to peel it off. If you ever did that with Elmer's glue on your hand when we were back in school, it's just like that. So it's just kind of fun. So I can do my intricate die right here. And by putting this all around, when I lift this up, this is just gonna be the beginning of a card. So I'm going to just put it on the white part here. I'm gonna do Tim's pounding. It's gonna be on here nice and flat and there isn't gonna be any extra glue by the time it dries. It's gonna look just perfect. So there's that. And then if I want to put vellum on, okay, I'm going to put vellum. Vellum is used to soften. Oh, look, it's one of the things you can do with it. Um, but you could see if you put a tape runner on. So I'm just going to put some of this right on my designer series paper. I'm going to lay my vellum over that. And I'm going for an overhang look, but I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm going to put that down. So this is how you would attach a vellum. Now, how cool is that? Like you don't see it at all. Really? So that's why I wanted to show this, because these are just, using them for these things is just perfect. Um, the other thing that's good about this is you can slide it a little bit. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you're doing something. Lavar is saying when she uses glue, it makes your card go wonky, and she uses a paperweight and sets it on the card till it dries. So that's a good idea. I've done that too with things that I want flat. If it's a fun fold and it isn't laying flat enough, I put it under some books. Yeah, <laughs> that's I don't want to pretend that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm saying, but uh, Lavar, is it possible you're putting too much glue on? <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's Tim's tip of the day. <laughs> and I will say, Rebecca said she needs another silicone mat. I, I'm just going to say I do have two because when I'm doing, like if I'm doing a bunch of cards with this, I like to lay out a whole bunch, two, two of them. And then by the time I get them all done, then I'm ready to scrape off the dry glue and do them all over again. So it's speed for me. Besides that, they don't take up very much room. And nothing wasted. That's right. I, nothing wasted. Okay, so Tim. This is... <laughs> I, I took this in my kitchen and I used pepper, black pepper in a grinder to oh, decorate that. So oh, that glue is not wasted. Okay. Okay. And, and you might frame that. And oh, if it only had a rooster on it. <laughs> okay. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready for the next one. Let's see. Um, I can see here. And. Okay, the best tip for fussy cutting. Who likes to fussy cut? I like fussy cutting. I make a lot of cards with fussy cutting. I think I got in the habit of doing it back when my mom had a few surgeries and I spent, and some other friends, parents, and I spent a lot of time sitting in the hospital. And it was a perfect thing to bring things in fussy cut because I could still chat and visit and just be there. Um, and so at night when Tim watches TV too, I just, I like having something to do. If the show gets interesting, I can stop. But if it's not, I can kind of be half listening. The biggest tip to fussy cutting is to hold your scissors still and move the paper. If you haven't done this, you really want to try it. It just is a world of difference. I think this is, this is the new hand pen paper. Which and it's really interesting because it's got, I really love how it goes. We have some like black outlines on some, not on the others. Do you see it's all very watercolory look? But it's still awesome for fussy cutting. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's really fun. So I will put all those out and then they'll be set and ready to do. So that's my little tip there. Renee says her best tip is to get a scan and cut. And you know what? I have one because when I was doing large things, certain things I like that for, but a scan and cut isn't going to work on this kind of a thing because nope. it's too, um, too, too, too soft and detailed. So, you know, there's a, there's a tool for every purpose. And now that I don't do my larger group things, I have a feeling I won't be using mine. Did it, <laughs> but, did, but, it take you, did it take you a while to leave your scissors stationary and move the paper? Or did you figure that out real quickly? Because that seems complicated to me. 
I don't, I know I've, I've done it that way for years. I don't even remember, but you see all these different little ones are all going to be different. So I, this, I had done some of these and made some cards with different, different sprays of these. And I just love how they're all different. Can you put your scissors in a vice? <laughs> Tim, and just have it run an automatic and, yeah. and then do a speed thing. Maybe yeah. you could invent that, Tim. Maybe. It could be. <laughs> Ready for number 10? Uh, yes. How to tie a basic knot on a card. And you know what? There is a bonus tip at the end. Yes, so we're yes, not done yes, with 10s. Yes. So you still want to stay. I, I, I showed Tim my list and I said, which one should I take off? And he goes, I'll do a bonus. <laughs> and I go, yeah, that's right. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> because I was trying to cover See, just ten, the basics. <laughs> 10 tightest tips. We went at 10. It, it, it <laughs> 11. We couldn't find anything to rhyme with it. Now, this is what a nice flat knot looks like. Look, this is going to be nice and flat on a card. If you put, you know, a sheet over the card or turn your card inside out, this isn't going to need any extra postage. I love this, but I also love, look how nice that is. It just is a nice flat little, little bow there. So to do, or a little knot, you could do bows the same ways, but we're not messing with that. And I am going to first put this you do around my card. Can we class in doing I did, yes, we did 20 ways to use your ribbon. This was way number one out of 20. A class of still available. That was in our whole good cards club. And, oh, and then people, you know, the fun thing about the classes are then people share what they do. So I showed 20 ways to do it. But then you didn't see my ways. You'd see a whole bunch of people doing those ideas. And then people were sharing how they stored their ribbon, all these great pictures, just the community. I think that is just so fun. So I'm just going to attach this. So here's my wraparound. And then I'm going to take this. The best ribbon saving tip is to leave the rest on the roll. Uh, and just take this out because I'll start from here and use what I need. So I am going to just start tying it like I would. Now all I need is a half knot. And the trick is I'm just pulling with my left. I'm not doing anything with my right. And look how that just folds into this nice, pretty, flat bow. And here's the other awesome thing. I can slide it. So if it's not exactly where I want it to be, I can move it on my string. That is the way I love doing bows. Okay. And so our bonus. Oh, we're already? I know. <laughs> already did the bonus? This is, a, this is long for us. I mean, this is a long uh, thing. So that's why I want to do these chapters. You go back and find what you want. Just a couple of punch tips. We did another class all about punches. And I don't know how many ways we had to use punches. So these are just a couple of basics that we cover in these videos. But just know we can go way in depth on any of these things. Okay. So the first tip I'm going to have is... If you have a punch and let me see if I did it. Okay. So I just punched, I just stamped my stamp there. And here is my daisy punch. And now I come to here and I want to punch and look at this. It is not going to work. I'm going to have to, I would have to come in and cut this at an angle. This is what I could do. I could come around. I could cut this. And then I could be doing this with each one of these things and just see now it'll work. But the tip is figure out which part of the stamp should face down. This is really an easy one, the daisy, but some stamps are a little more complicated. I just put a tiny little permanent marker dot right there. And now when I stamp, I always know that is facing down because then when I come in with my punch, it's going to be just lined up and ready. Wow. So isn't that fun? So that's the first one. And then the other one is, you know, um, I just love this out. And you can do this with dies or punches. Okay, so this is this is gonna be my, my card. And this is like a, a blue milk glass. This is gonna be a little little base for the card. So I want this on this, but but to see, you can use the insides of all of your papers. I think this is so cool. Dies would work the same. I could be cutting out anything I want from here, a die cut, because the only part that's going to show on this is the outside edge. The other thing that's cool is if this happens to be the back of my card, this is actually a perfect place to put hand stamped by. <laughs> Karen, so sometimes it's really fun if you can work this out to have it on the back of your card. But I think this is just a little paper 
saving technique. I particularly use things like this when you're using specialty papers, like maybe the gold or the silver or any of those. Um, and let's say you wanted a silver star and then you're going to be on a silver background. So do the star on the inside. You're doing it all out of one piece of paper. So That's um, it. Uh, that is it. I'm going to put it back on us. And thank you <laughs> for bearing with us as we go through 10 top tips. So yeah. if you like this video, I'd love to do more like this and we'll get into more uh, more things because, you know, this is just um, – touching the surface, but that's why we'd love to hear your questions, your tips, your ideas, things we could share about. So, but they're kind of meant more as like a reference that you can go back to and be reminded, you know, cause sometimes when people say now, how did you do that? How did you attach that lacy dye? And I'm trying to go find where to tell them. It's just so nice to just have some of these videos. Oh, go right here. And it's at, you know, minute, you know, it's at 10 minute, 23 seconds. <laughs> there you'll find your answers. So that's kind of the purpose. So now, that was dress rehearsal. We're going to go change into some bright colors and we're going to come really back fun. and do it all over. So we'll see a bunch of you tomorrow night in All Good Cards Club. I'd put a link up because there's still this room. We'd love to have you join us. We spend the weekend together. We meet once on Friday, twice on Saturday. Do you have access to the PDFs and videos forever? So it doesn't matter if you're not live. And I bring Karen tea. He brings I, me tea. I step in to say hi <laughs> yes. at least once. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he asked me in the morning and about 10 o'clock. Should I put my teeth in so I can say hi? That's kind of how our Saturdays go. <laughs> and I said, well, if you're going to say hi, please do. <laughs> they are perfect. Yeah, I know. Yours are, mine aren't. That's because yours are fake. See, that's that's the advantage and disadvantage. I got what I was born with. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for enjoying this time with us, for laughing with us, creating with us. We love having you in our community. And see you later. Bye. Bye.